Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday uh, to all the mothers joining us this morning. Happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, I just want to encourage us as we begin this morning. I know you're in your homes, and I don't know what your home is like, but you might have distractions around you right now. So I just want to encourage you to try to minimize and eliminate any distractions that you can. And let's just zero in and focus on worshiping our God this morning. So Morgan's going to lead us in some songs to begin with. So let's worship and praise our God. Good morning, Hope Community Church, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, let's start off uh, this morning by just uh, starting in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for, um, for all the mothers that you have put in our lives. Um, I just thank you that we can um, worship you and glorify you this morning. Um, I thank you for my mother and just for um, who she is and um, I just pray for each person who um, is thinking of that special person this morning. Um, maybe they are no longer here or they get to sit right next to them this morning. I just pray that um, as we go throughout our week that we would just continuously be thankful for that special person in our lives. God, as we continue to um, just glorify you this morning and worship, uh, just pray that you would help us to, like Jared said, to put our distractions aside. Um, sometimes it's difficult to not get ready in the morning and go to church and prepare our hearts. Um, we are, we're preparing our hearts in a different way. And so God, I just pray this morning that you would help us to do that. Um, Father, we just thank you for your goodness. Your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> We stand and lift up our hands. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Together we sing. Be heard, 
guitar sing my mirror way at the sound of your great name all condemned feel no shame at the sound of your great name every fear has no place at the sound of your great name the enemy he has to leave at the sound of your great name Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. I just messed this up. I'm so sorry. I can't see my words. I'm so sorry, church. All the weak, all the weak, I'm their slave at the sound of your great name. Hungry souls receive the rain at the sound of your great name. The Father led. They find their rest at the sound of your great name. The sick are healed and the dead are raised at the sound of your great name. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. Redeemer, my healer, Lord, Almighty, Defender, my Savior, you are mighty. Redeemer, my healer, Lord Almighty. Defender, my Savior, you are my King. Jesus. Just sing his name. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Father, we just thank you that we can proclaim um, that you are the great king, um, that you have a great name, that we can merely speak the name of Jesus and you will hear us. Father, we thank you for who you are. In your name we pray. Amen. Morgan, thank you so much for faithfully leading us. We love you and we appreciate you so much. Um, we're going to turn the video over to Doug Fetterman. He's going to do the scripture reading for us now. Nope. Go, oh, no. <laughs> yeah.
Sorry about that. I must be technologically challenged. <laughs> Our scripture reading today is Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. And it's an epilogue, the wife of a noble character. A, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants the vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate and he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her work bring her praise at the city gate. I'll be honest, church, there is kind of an ache within me uh, this morning. Um, one of our core values as a family is to just mark and celebrate life's moments. So I am just kind of grieving and aching on this Mother's Day that we can't be together as a church family and to honor and celebrate all the moms in our congregation. So please know my heart is there today. You deserve honor and praise as we just heard from Proverbs 31. I can't help but thank God for Yvonne. <laughs> what a blessing she is to me and our kids. I mean, this quarantine life is proving once again, man, she is just an amazing uh, wife and mother. And I was telling Joshua this morning, you don't know how blessed you are uh, to have the mom you do. And when I was a young kid, I didn't realize it either. Uh, what a great mother God had given me, just her example, uh, just the many sacrifices uh, she made for me. Oh, so moms today, we honor you and we celebrate you. And I just want to lead us in a prayer now, uh, specifically just thanking God for the women of our church. So let's pray together. Proverbs 31 says, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And God, I just want to start right there. Just thank you, God, for the many godly women in our church family. The women in our church who love you and are devoted to you first. The women in our church who make so many sacrifices for their families and for our bodies 
of, of believers, uh, the women of our church who nurture and care for people, the women of our church who are faithful in praying and seeking after you, God. And God, we want to thank you specifically for the mothers and the grandmothers and the spiritual mothers in our church family. And I pray today that they would know how much they matter to you. They would know how valuable they are to you, that you cherish them, that you delight in them, that you take joy over them. And I pray today they would be encouraged by you. I pray that you continue to use them to build their families and to build our church, God. So today, give them peace. Give them joy. Give them a sense of your affirmation and your delight over them. And as Morgan alluded to in her prayer, today is difficult for some. Uh, some have lost their mothers who have passed on. Some have a difficult relationship with their mom. Some dream of being a mother and that hasn't happened yet, God. So in these places of disappointment and grief and pain, God, we acknowledge you are the God of compassion. You are the God who can meet us in those places, God. So I pray your Holy Spirit would minister to each one of us today, wherever we're at. And God, I think of our missionary families uh, who are serving you overseas, and specifically for the wives and the mothers, for Carolyn Zimmer, for Andine Cato, and for Alta Minnelli. God, I just pray for your special blessing on them today as they serve you, as they are mothering and in investing in their families. God, would you be near to them and encourage them today? And God, as we open up your word, uh, we acknowledge, God, we need to hear from you today. God, I need to hear from you. We, each one of us, need to hear from the living God through his living word. So God, I pray you would open us up. You would reveal what you want to say to us, God, and we would hear from you and would respond to you, God. And God, I pray that you would give me strength. You would give me a love for you and a love for people, even as I speak now, that your Holy Spirit would enable me beyond myself, God. And I recognize how much I need you. And God, we pray this all in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So earlier this week, Joshua and I watched the first movie of the Back to the Future trilogy. And man, what a classic of a movie. Uh, it brought back so many childhood memories for me and just great moments from, from me as a kid. And there's a song in that first movie that is just really well known. It's the opening scene and Marty McFly is riding his skateboard. He's uh, late for school, so he's hitching a ride on the back of a car. And this song is playing in the background. And it became a hit song in 1985 when it was released. The song is The Power of Love. And I really debated uh, whether I should sing it for you. And since it's Mother's Day, I'm not going to sing it for, for you in honor of our mothers. But here are the lyrics. You don't need money. Don't take fame. Don't need no credit card to ride this train. It's strong and it's sudden and it's cruel sometimes. But it might just save your life. That's the power of love. The power of love. And that's the title of the sermon today. And I want to tie it into Mother's Day and celebrating our moms. But this message is for all of us. And uh, I believe there's no better passage of scripture than 1 Corinthians 13 that speaks about the potency of love. And at many weddings, they will read 1 Corinthians 13, but it's not a passage addressed to married couples. It was written to the church of Corinth. So it's for all followers of Jesus Christ. So this passage is for all of us. And I want to begin by just reading the entire passage, even though we're going to focus just on a few of the verses. So turn with me in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting in verse 1. If I speak in human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, 
I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And I just, I want to pray for us one more time before we dive into this passage. God, I just, I pray that you would speak to us now. This is such a potent passage of scripture. And may we not miss what you want to say to us, God. So give us ears to hear right now. Give us hearts that are open to your word and to you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin with the first two verses. So 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 and 2. If I speak in human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. So imagine you're in your kitchen and you are baking. Uh, I know a lot of people are baking these days because there's a flour shortage going on right now. Uh, Yvonne has been doing her fair share of baking and we are well fed in that area. So you're baking bread and you go through all the steps. So you mix the ingredients, you, you knead the dough, you put the dough in the pan and then you put it in the oven and, and you wait. And finally it comes to time to pull the bread out of the oven and as you're pulling the bread out of the oven, you realize you forgot an important ingredient. You forgot to add yeast to the bread. So the bread did not rise whatsoever. Baking failed. All that time, all those ingredients, all that effort for nothing, all for nothing because you forgot an important ingredient. So Paul's writing to the church in Corinth, and he's listing out all these profoundly spiritual things, speaking in human or angelic tongues. The gift of prophecy, faith that can move mountains. I and mean, I don't know about you, I'm thinking, wow, those are spiritually significant and powerful things. Yet God's word says, if I do not have love, tongues are like a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I do not have love, prophecy and knowledge and faith, it all amounts to nothing. All the spiritual power for nothing because of the missing ingredient of love. Verse 3, it says, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Paul goes on, he describes tremendous sacrifice here giving all your possessions away to the poor, giving your physical body over to hardship and suffering, material and physical sacrifice of the highest order, and yet without love, it's for naught. I gain nothing. The missing ingredient of love. This morning, I applaud and give my honor today to all our mothers. Uh, mothers almost need to have superhero powers to do what you do. Caring for your children, caring for your home, juggling a job while you do it. 
So many sacrifices that moms make for their families and their children. Not, it's not just one day they're making this, these sacrifices. Day in, day out. Year after year, decade after decade. We thank you. We celebrate you today. We honor you today. And I just want to encourage the moms this morning that even more important than the sacrifices, even more important than all the acts of service uh, that you do for your children and your family is the love behind it all, the love. And these first few verses are an invitation to all of us to check ourselves. What is our motivation? What is the drive behind what, why we do what we do? Because we can make many sacrifices. We can do a lot of spiritual things, but we can't lose sight in the important ingredient of love. Love needs to be in the front seat driving what we are doing. In the next few verses, we're going to see the substance, the potency of the love that Paul is talking about. So let's look at verses 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. There is so much in these verses. Uh, it's packed with rich elements of God's perspective on love. And last week, Pastor John encouraged us just to saturate ourselves in God's word. And this is a great passage just to sit with this week. Dwell on these verses. Soak your mind and your heart in these qualities of love that ultimately speak about God's love. And I want to focus in on the first two qualities of love that verse 4 speaks about. First, love is patient. You know, I find it fascinating out of all the qualities of love that patience is the first one that Paul chooses to write about. Because if you're like me, man, I don't like patience too much. This isn't my favorite quality on the list. I think of that old commercial, I think it was for Heinz ketchup. And it was a little boy, he had a plate of fries. And he's holding the ketchup bottle upside down. He's patiently waiting for the ketchup to come out of the bottle. And the tagline is, the best things come to those who wait. But if I was that boy, after a few seconds, I'm like, I am done waiting. I just want to eat those fries. It's hard for us to be patient, right? One of the things I, I believe this quarantine is teaching us, is inviting us to, is to slow down. To embrace waiting, even though it's hard for us. To learn to be patient. God is almost force-feeding patience on us right now. And at the essence of patience is long-suffering. Long-suffering, the ability to endure, to be steadfast, to stick with something or someone through the ups and downs. And any significant relationship is eventually going to require patience. It's a guarantee. Marriage requires patience. Man, trust me, Yvonne has been so wonderfully patient with me. Almost 17 years of marriage, dealing with my failings and my weaknesses, long suffering, enduring with me. And motherhood, every mother needs patience, right? A mother will learn to suffer for their child. At the beginning, it's sleepless nights, lack of sleep. And then it turns into a, a toddler who's exerting their will and pushing the boundaries. And then a teenager who's pushing the boundaries even further. And then it's dealing with your child's sin, which then triggers your sin. There's a roller coaster in a relationship between a mom and a child. And there are wonderful moments too. Wonderful moments of connection and bonding between a mother and a child. And the patience, the long suffering of a mother with their child is because the mother loves the child. Love is patient. 
And I'm seeing this play out right now in the quarantine life in our home. Uh, Yvonne is leading our kids through virtual learning and online school. And trust me, there are moments that are hard. I see it. I feel it for Yvonne and for our kids. And Yvonne is demonstrating long suffering, loving our kids through this season. And I believe this quarantine will test the patience in our relationships. You might already be experiencing this. There's an opportunity for us now to demonstrate the power of love through patience, through bearing with one another. Love is patient. Verse four again, second thing is love is kind. Where patience is more reactive, kindness is proactive. Kindness of love, it builds up, it blesses the other. When I think of kindness, I think first about our words towards one another. And this is, was the lesson in Band of Brothers yesterday, so it's a great tie-in to this part of the message. And I want to share two metaphors about the kindness of expressing God's love in our relationships. I want to look at first Proverbs 16, 24. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. So back then, they didn't have chocolate, okay? So when an example of sweetness was used, they used the metaphor of honey. But if we're contextualizing this to the modern era, and especially for moms and women, uh, gracious words are like chocolate. So if you have some chocolate in your home, I want to encourage you to eat. Eat it today. So eat some chocolate today. And as you're eating that chocolate, enjoying the sweetness and the richness of it, Think about the sweetness of kind words in your relationship. It says here, gracious words are sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Kind words have the power to touch the depth of a person's soul and to bring healing. And I don't think we realize how much our words can make a difference in other people's lives. I, I can think of moments in my life when someone expressed kind and significant words to me, and I've held on to those words for decades now. There's a power to words that are filled with the kindness of God's love. Kind, kind words bring a sweetness in relationships. Kind words also build up. It says here in Proverbs, they bring healing to the bones. In Ephesians 4.29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. There's a zero tolerance stance here from Paul. Only what is helpful for building others up. Our words have the power to mark people for good or for bad, to build or to tear down. Now think about your relationships for a moment, whether it's a spouse, a child, a friend. Imagine that every conversation that you have with that person, a sticky note gets put on that other person. So I have two sticky notes here. I have a black sticky note and I have a green sticky note. Yes, these are homemade, you can tell, right? So a black sticky note represents a moment where you use words to tear down, to discourage to slight or make fun of that other person. And that, that moment marks that person in a negative way. It's damaging to their well-being. On the contrary, this green sticky note represents a moment when you use words to bless, to encourage, to restore, to build up the other person. Those moments speak life and love to that person in a significant way. As we get older, as we mature in Christ, man, we should be green sticky note people. People who are marking others with words of kindness and love and building them up. Right now, are you a green sticky note person or are you a black sticky note person? Is the quarantine getting to you and you're, you're finding yourself on the edge at times and the words spilling out of you are more discouraging and destructive? and harmful to others? Or are you using the season to bless, 
to encourage, to speak life and hope into your relationships through kind words. Love is kind. Love expresses words that are sweet to the soul, words that build up another person, not tears them down. And there are so many stories for God, how God has used the power of a mother's love to impact a child. I came across a story about a family in Scotland this week. And, and the family, they had a daughter, and she was rebellious, and she came to a point where she had had enough with her family. She rejected them. She rejected their faith and their values, and she set off um, away from home. She left the house, and she was living on her own. She got into a bunch of bad stuff, got mixed into the wrong stuff. She was living on the streets. She was going from homeless shelter to homeless shelter. And she had cut off all ties with her family. So she didn't know that her father passed away. And she didn't know that her mother had never stopped looking for her. Until one day, uh, she was in a homeless shelter. And on the board was a picture of her mom. Her mom had put these pictures all across the city. It was a picture of her mom with the words, I love you still, come home. I love you still, come home. The daughter saw the picture of her mom and she was in disbelief. She, she was stunned. She wondered, could it really be true that my mom still loves me after all I've done? And she was so desperate that she decided she's gonna head home. And she came to her house in the middle of the night and the, the front door was unlocked. And she panicked. She thought someone had broken into their house. And she, she went into the house and quickly found her mother in the bedroom. And they embraced. Her mom was okay. And it was a great moment of healing for them. And the daughter said, Mom, I thought something had happened to you because the front door was unlocked. And her mom said, no, dear. That door has been unlocked since the day you left. I've been waiting for you to come home. Man, that's a powerful story. That's an example of the patience, the kindness, the power of love. And I tell you what, that kind of love, that has a power source. It doesn't come from us just trying to do better, working harder, being better people. The power source of that kind of love is God himself. It's important that we make sure we know the starting point of love is God. It's never ourselves, no way. There's a recent worship song titled, Love Has a Name. Love has a name, and I love that title. Because love isn't just an abstract concept or a theoretical idea. Love is rooted in a person, and his name is Jesus. Love has a name. And I want to look at Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 to close and remind us that we are called to be like Jesus in the way we love. So turn with me to Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. As Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, what does he call them in verse 1? Dearly loved children. That's who we are because of Christ. We need to start with remembering we are dearly loved. We are God's beloved sons and daughters. We are marked and stamped by the love of God as his beloved. And then knowing that we are God's beloved... We need to look at verse 2. It says, walk in the way of love. Just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. There, there is no greater example of love than Jesus. Offering himself as a sacrifice for us on the cross. There is no greater picture of love than the cross of Jesus Christ. That's how much God loves us. That is the power of God's love. But did you catch the command here in verses 1 and 2? The command is to follow 
God's example and to walk in the way of love like Christ. And the bar, the standard is set very high for us. As God's beloved, walk in the way of love like Jesus in your homes, how you treat your spouse, how you love your children, your grandchildren, your siblings. Walk in the way of love like Jesus. As God's beloved, walk in the way of love like Jesus in your neighborhood and your workplace, how you care for your next door neighbors, how you interact with your coworkers, how you treat your friends. As God's beloved, walk in the way of love like Jesus in our church family, how we interact with our brothers and sisters in Christ here at Hope. And at the core of the way of love is sacrifice. It is selflessness. It's putting the other above yourself. That's what Christ did for us. That's what it means to follow his example. Church, my prayer for us is that God, make us more like your son, Jesus Christ. Make us more like Jesus in the way we walk in the way of love, like Christ. God, may the hallmark of our lives and our church be the love of God pouring out through us. And I'll tell you what, our world right now is ripe for the power of God's love to be poured out. I believe God wants to unleash his people to bring the power of his love into our broken and hurting world. And this week, there will be choices. There will be opportunities for us to walk in the way of love, to follow God's example, to be patient, to be kind, to live out the power of God's love as we have received it. And I pray that we would be ready. We would be open to the Spirit's leading. And God would use us to bring sparks of his love in our families, in our relationships that would turn into a raging fire of the love of God being poured out on our world. I want to close by just reading again 1 Corinthians 13 verses 1 through 8 to just let us soak in these words of Scripture one more time before I pray. If I speak in human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much that love has a name. And his name is Jesus. God, you are love. We praise you that you are love. And God, we thank you so much that we are your beloved. Help us to soak in your love for us today and this week. That you love us with an everlasting love. That your love for us never stops. It never runs out. And we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus, the greatest display of love in human history. And God, my prayer for us is make us more like Christ. Make us more like your son, Jesus. Help us to walk in the way of love. And I pray specifically, God, that you would make us patient. You would make us long-suffering in our relationships beyond our human ability. God, may your spirit give us patience to endure, to be steadfast. 
And God, give us kindness. Help us to use our words to build up, to bring sweetness to our relationships. God, we need your help for this. But we thank you that we start as being your beloved. And because of your love for us, may we, may we love one another. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, let's sing again to our God. Father, I just thank you so much that you are the beautiful um, picture of patience and kindness. God, I just thank you that when we proclaim you will reign forever, it is true. 
Father, you will reign forever, and we thank you that you sent your Son to die for us, to love us that much, to show us what true patience and love is. Thank you for your kindness. You will reign forever. You will reign forever. You will reign forever. You will reign forever. Let's proclaim that. You will reign forever. You will reign Happy Mother's Day, everyone. As we're singing about the holiness of God and just how high and lifted up he is, I, I just thinking ahead to the day when we will stand face to face before our God in all his holiness and majesty and perfection. And in that moment, we will experience face to face perfect and I don't know what that's going to be like, but it's going to be an awesome moment when you experience the full weight of God's love for us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 14, you can memorize this. Do everything in love. Do everything in love. And that's my prayer for us this week as God's beloved. Do everything in love. 
as God's beloved, demonstrate his patience in our relationships. As God's beloved, show the kindness of God's love to one another. Be blessed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.